The future of cities in California is related to their water availability and Fairfields is extremely bright. The water system previously had been managed by a man by the name of Ray Venning and his wife, her name was Edith. And she would tell me these stories about how she, at earlier times, handled all of the city water billing from her kitchen table. That shows you how things were at that time, but it was in a transition state, a state of change. So we needed a way to move large quantities of water across town to the Cordelia area, connecting all the system together so that we have a lot of redundancy and we have some reliability and ability to serve the entire city from multiple sources. That's where the origin of the East-West Water Transmission Pipeline was, that we needed a way to do that. And so as soon as we had that selection that was all working out, I started looking at how are we going to get the water from there to there. So we hired a consulting firm, Creek and D'Angelo, to take a look at that and try to figure it out. They actually finished that first study in 1987, so that's the first published document. I just looked at that skeletal major pipeline map and said, well, if you just drew a line here and you put a line there, you could connect this to this and we'd have two crossings of Susun Valley. We could connect to our new treatment plant. And I just kind of traced on that map what I thought would possibly work. I took it to Ron Hurlbut, he looked at it, he said, I think this is a great idea. He immediately, we, we went upstairs to see Charlie Long, the city manager. Charlie took one look at the sketch and said, do it. It was a great plan of bricks, to be able to get water from the North Bay Regional site uh, down across town in order to provide redundancy to the city's water system. We modeled the pipelines to determine the size that would be needed in order to get water down to the Cordelia area. Between the two projects, the 30-inch project and the 36-inch project, it's about 10 and a half to 11 miles of pipeline. We call it the East-West Water Transmission Pipeline. Uh, this is finally getting us into construction. Uh, this project's been in planning and design for quite some time. It was a big project, so we couldn't build it all at once, and we had to break it up into segments. You think about how much ground we covered and all the impacts, uh, every segment had a need. We were building the, the one pipeline going up to one of the reservoirs, and we came across the Calippe Silver Spot Butterfly. Well, I didn't get to see the butterfly, but it's the plant, the viola plant, that's a host to the butterfly. Because the plant was there, we had to go and hand walk and actually crawl, in many cases, with a biologist to be sure that we weren't endangering it. The city of Fairfield became a model in regards to working closely with the environment, the biological, as well as to getting a project completed that it can be done. Most cases, we, we were able to construct segments of the pipeline within a year, you know, some two years. When you're looking at an installation of a, a pipeline project, there's multiple crews going on. I may say you had an altitude valve involved and you had a contractor, you had a crew over there working on that. And then you had another crew digging the trench line out. Then you had another crew doing the installation of the pipe. Then you had another crew actually doing the welding of the pipe. It was like a little small city out there working all these different trades, all these different functions. A 
over time, the city built segment upon segment upon segment as the opportunity arose. Like a, a road was going to be repaved, put the pipeline in, then repave the road, that kind of thing. And eventually, all the segments were done. The Crosstown Pipeline now has actually been aiding in additional reliability, uh, operational flexibility that allows the city to move water in ways that it could not prior to completion of the project. Lately, we've been able to send water the opposite direction. Maybe not the original intent of the pipeline, but we've been able to pump water from Waterman Treatment Plant to the east side of town. Uh, and it's really shown that if either plant ever has some significant problems where it's offline, uh, one plant can kind of take over the entire city supplying water, which is definitely in the last couple of years with fires and the PSPS events it has shown that we, we really need it. Today we have a working system that uh, we all can be proud of, especially the citizens. To have a secure water supply for a city like Fairfield means we can attract industries for whom that is important. If we're going to sell our city, selling our water system is one of the first things that comes to mind in California because so many other places have unreliable water supply, and we don't. So to have this cross down and have two treatment plants that can serve water to the entire city, that's huge for the safety of the community and for the customers. The council supported us on this. It wasn't for our city council and city managers in the time. You know, this project could have had a lot of headaches. It's a huge benefit to this community. It's part of what public works and water utilities do. We, typically, we don't want to be in the, the headlines. You want to make sure that service is provided at all times and people don't even think about it. <laughs>